projectile motions and how we deal with this projectile motions. So basically there are two type of projectile. One is along horizontal, horizontal projectile and what another is angular projectile. So today we shall discuss with only horizontal projectile. In our daily life, we have an idea that when a particle is thrown with an angle with horizontal direction, then it only it is called projectile motion. But this is the case of angular projectile. Today, we not deal with this type of question. In the next lecture, we go with horizontal angular, sorry, angular projectile. Today only we deal with a horizontal projectile. So, what is horizontal projectile? Horizontal projectile is if anybody, any man standing on a tower and throw a ball in horizontal direction, it will fall on the ground tracing a parabolic path. So, a horizontal projectile example is number one is the javelin throw by athlete. Javelin throw by athlete. Athletic. Javelin throw by athletic. Javelin throw by, sorry, athletic. Number two, horizontal projectile is bomb or any food packet dropped from aeroplane. Dropped from aeroplane. Number three is stone thrown from a tower or cliff or cliff. So in this case the motion is not the motion of the particle is not mixed theta with the horizontal but the Velocity is along the only along the horizontal direction or along the horizontal direction. So this type of projectile motion is called horizontal projection. Okay. So now we get that what is a projectile motion called? What is the definition of projectile? Now we go with what is the definition of projectile? So definition of projectile please take your copy we can now give the definition of projectile when a particle is thrown into space it's into space with an initial velocity with and initial velocity it's moves thereafter with the influence of acceleration due to gravity alone without propelled 
by any engine or fuel so when a particle is thrown into the space with an initial velocity it moves thereafter with the influence of acceleration due to gravity alone without propelled by any engine or fuel this is the definition of projectile motions this is the definition of projectile motions so <coughs> and the path followed by a projectile is called trajectory of the projectile so in this case we have assume some thing that what are the assumptions taken number one assumptions is taken that neglect air resistance resistance of air is totally neglected number two effect of earth curvature number three effect of earth curvature is neglected number three neglect effect of earth rotation and number four is value of g is constant in magnitude and direction so we can learn that what is the definition of projectile and in case of horizontal projectile motions what are the assumption <coughs> sorry so neglect air resistance neglect air effect of earth curvature effect of earth rotation and gravitational constant the value of g is 9.8 per meter per second square or 10 in some special case and its direction okay so projectile motions was first introduced by galileo galilei in 1632 okay he write about the laws of physical independence what is the laws of physical independence we know about the laws of physical independence so laws of physical independence is the so we can go with laws of physical independence so what is laws of physical independence now the horizontal okay and vertical components does not affect one another but acts on the body simultaneously this is the laws of physical independence galileo galilei was first introduced it in his famous book so the horizontal and vertical components does not affect one another but acts on the body simultaneously now we go with the physical independence behavior of projectile motion so suppose a particle is thrown from point o from sorry from point a in horizontal direction with an initial speed u then it due to acceleration of gravity it does not go along the horizontal direction it must be bent due to acceleration of gravity and test this path so this point is called b point here we assume that the horizontal velocity u becomes constant throughout the projectile and vertical component v y equal to 0 for initial at initial point u equal to constant u is the 
बड़ा जेनरल कम्पोनेंट ऑफ भेलोसिटी इक्वल टू यू इक्वल टू कन्स्टेंट एंड भि वाई इज द भार्टिकल भेलोसिटी एज एट द इनिशियल पॉइंट देयर इज नो भार्टिकल मोशन नो भार्टिकल भेलोसिटी सो एट द टाइम ऑफ एट एट पॉइंट ए भि वाई बिकम्स जिरो दैट इज द भार्टिकल मोशन भार्टिकल भेलोसिटी बिकम्स जिरो एंड हराइजेंटल भेलोसिटी बिकम्स कन्स्टेंट हुई इज टेकन एज यू सो आफ्टर साम टाइम टी द पार्टिकल कम्स एट पॉइंट पी हुई इज हेज कॉर्डिनेट एक्स एंड वाई सो दिस पॉइंट इज एक्स एंड दिस पॉइंट is y the vertical distance is y and the horizontal distance is x if you said this point is e so at this point the horizontal velocity vx is obviously u because we, i say that the horizontal component is always u and the vertical component of velocity that is vy have some value we will find out the value of vy and if the resultant velocity is along the tangent if it is taken as v which is resultant of vx and vy sorry it is v which is vx and vy and which makes an angle beta with vx so if we draw a parallelogram then tan beta equal to vy by vx now we go with some problem some definition or we will find out some topic so we know that the at first we go with time of flight time of flight time of flight is the time total time total time for which the body remains in space okay so we can again draw the picture this is u particle traces this path this point is p vx vy resultant velocity v makes angle beta so as the height of the particle from ground is h so we can say that h equal to vy plus half gt square from s equal to ut plus half at square equation here u equal to 0 because as we take the vertical height so we can take the vertical component of velocity which is initially 0 so we can take to time of flight as capital t so we can get that z h equal to half g t square or time of flight t equal square equal to twice h by g or t equal to root under twice h by g okay so if we know the height of the particle from ground and obviously we know the acceleration due to g so we can find out the total time of flight now next we can go with horizontal range horizontal distance or it is called a range it is the horizontal distance covered it is said x or r it is the horizontal distance covered of the particle during its total time of flight it is the horizontal distance horizontal distance covered 
बाई पार्टिकल और बॉडी इन टोटल टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट सो आर इक्वल टू हरिजेंटल कंपोनेंट वेलोसिटी ऑफ हरिजेंटल कंपोनेंट दैट इज भी एक्स मल्टीप्लाई बाई टोटल टाइम ऑफ टी सो वी कैन गेट भी एक्स इक्वल टू यू टी पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ टी रूट टाइस एच बाई जी सो द वैल्यू ऑफ रेंज इक्वल टू यू रूट टाइस एच बाई जी यू मस्ट बी पुट इन योर कॉपी ओके सो दिस इज नॉट फैमिलियर उथ आवार with the picture of projectile motion which is seen in our book we can deal with the angular horizon angular projectile motions in the next video if you like my video please subscribe for new interesting video so horizontal distance and time of flight is great now what is the trajectile what is the trajectory now it is parabolic in nature it is parabolic in nature how can we prove that so we can now prove the that the tra trajectory of the body or particle is parabolic the equation of a parabola the equation of a parabola is given as y equal to ax plus bx square or minus that is y must be a quadratic function of x so we can say that the this is parabola now we can say that the horizontal distance x equal to u into t at time t after time t the particle goes at point or reaches at point p whose coordinate is x y so we can say that x equal to ut or from this equation we can get t equal to x divided by u number 1 equation this is horizontal distance x that is this distance now we go with the vertical height y what is the vertical height this this height is y this height from the top to the point p if we draw a normal then you can get a vertical height so vertical height y equal to 0 as the initial vertical velocity is 0 horizontal velocity is u and horizontal velocity is always u whatever may be the position of the particle okay so y equal to 0 plus half a becomes g t square so half g put the value of t that is x square by u square so y equal to g by 2 u square multiplied by x square or you can say it k x square by k equal to g by twice u square twice u square so again the y is a quadratic function of x so we can say that the nature of the trajectory is parabolic okay in this way we can see that what is the projectile motions along horizontal direction if we throw a ball from a tower if we uh, uh, fire a gun from a rifle if we throw a stone from a tower then all these are horizontal projectile motion now we go with a simple mathematics or numerical problem for your clear idea suppose there are two buildings are separated from each other by a distance of 200 meter 200 meter the height there are two window building 1 and building 2 building 1 has a window at a height 540 meter from the ground level and building 2 has another window which is at a height only 50 meter from the ground level this is ground okay if someone wants to throw a stone 
so that it can enter the second window then what is the initial velocity of the stone okay i repeat the question again there are two building building 1 and building 2 which which are separated by a distance of 200 meter if someone is very naughty so he wants to broke the glass of this window then he put a stone and throw it take a stone and throw it on this window then what must be the velocity of the stone initial velocity of the stone so here what is the value of h we can find out at first the value of h now as this is 540 meter height and this the window the first window is 540 meter from the ground and the second window is 50 meter from the ground so the resultant h is 540 minus 50 that is 490 meter h is becomes 490 meter and here x is given by or r is given by 200 meter so you can find out the value of u <coughs> as we know that r or x equal to r equal to x e r, sorry r or x equal to this is x equal to u multiplied by total time of flight t u multiplied by total time of flight t so if we put, take u equal to r by t then we can find out the velocity of u now from h equal to u t plus half g into t square we can find out the value of h we can uh, sorry we can find out the value of time of flight t so we put the value of h 490 is equal to half value of g is 9.8 multiply by t square that is 4.9 t square equal to 490 divided by 4.9 <coughs> that is 100 so time of flight t equal to 10 second put the value of t here here r is given as 200 meter divided by time of flight 10 second that is 20 meter per second is the initial velocity so the velocity of stone must be 20 meter per second so that it can enters into the second window okay so i hope the topic i teach you or trying to teach you you can understand it so in the next day we can learn with the angular projectile motion which is familiar to you so from today i will bring very interesting video for both class 11 and 12 okay so if you learn physics from basic if you grow interest in physics please watch my channel till the end not skip the video and if you like my video please subscribe for today thank you very much